Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. I'm in the process of creating some seascape paintings to send down to the gallery that I sell through in Wellington in New Zealand. And as part of that painting process, I always create some colour studies first. These are kind of small paintings which I can work from before I create my bigger final paintings. And they're really great to help plan the road ahead and iron out any mistakes that you might not see when you're doing the final painting, if that makes sense. So I've been working on some small paintings at the moment, small studies, and I thought I'd show you some of the process. So in this video, I'm gonna show you this seascape that I created. It's just an eight by 10 color study of the south coast of Wellington. And I'm gonna use this painting as reference for a larger painting. Now these are great because not only do they help you see the road ahead, but they just make great little paintings. So you can even sell those as well. And that even brings me on to things like painting local scenes, because if you're an artist, it's nice to sell some paintings and local scenes are actually really popular. So in this video, as I say, I'll just show you a bit of the process of how I create a color study and plan some of my paintings. And I'll give you some tips on mixing colors and painting seascapes in general. So I hope you enjoy this video, grab your paintbrushes, sit back, relax, and let's roll the tape. I'm painting on an 8 inch by 10 inch linen panel. And the linen is a medium weave linen that's oil primed and it's mounted to Baltic birch. These are actually pre-made panels that I use. They're made by a company in the USA called SourceTech at canvaspanels.com and I've put a link in the description box below if you'd like to check those out. These panels are so convenient, great for plain air painting and doing small studies such as this. I sketch out the composition using Burnt Sienna and Liquin Original and Liquin is the medium that I'm using because I'm using oil paint. So what this does is it thins the paint and speeds up the drying time. And I'm just sketching out the composition with a number one round brush. Now as I sketch out the composition, I'll go over the colours that I'm using. I'm using a brand of paint called Blue Ridge Oil Colours, and the colours I'm using include Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Cadmium Orange, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and Thalo Green. So this is a relatively simple palette here, which is what I like to use because it just makes color mixing easier in my opinion. Now one thing about using oil paints is I would always recommend using an artist quality oil even if you've never painted in your life. And always use one brand as well because those paints will work with each other much better. As I said just a moment ago, I'm using Blue Ridge oil colors and these are really nice paints to use. I've put a link in the description below if you'd like to check out their website. They also ship worldwide as well. So now that my composition's sketched out, the first thing I think about are the values in the landscape and value is how light or dark a subject is. So I'm going to be painting my dark values first. Now we'll find our darkest darks and our lightest lights in the foreground, but as landforms recede, Darks are not as dark and lights are not as light, and this is because the value range narrows. The darkest values here are the rocks in the foreground, and I mix a near black with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Because burnt sienna is a dark orange, when it combines with the blue, they cancel each other out. We can create a very dark tone with this. I use a number five flat brush and I start marking in those major shadows within these rocks. For the rocks in the mid-ground, the shadows are going to be a bit lighter, so I've mixed in some titanium white as well. Now at this stage, I'm trying to use the biggest brushes that I can get away with, so number five flat brushes, and this is so that I can create a painterly effect, and also I can cover ground quickly as well. I'm using Rosemary & Co brushes, and mainly flat brushes, filberts and rounds. If you'd like to get hold of some Rosemary & Co brushes, I've put a link in the description box below. Once I've painted in the rock shadows, I then paint the headland in the distance. Now because this is a lot further away, those shadows are going to be much lighter than the shadows in the rocks in the foreground. 
So what I've done here is I've created a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna to desaturate, titanium white and then also a little bit of alizarin crimson. Now you want to edge the mixture more on the blue side just because in nature there's naturally a blue cast to a lot of distant landforms and also it stops the colour from looking muddy as well. Once I've marked this in, I then mark in the cloud shadows and I'm using the exact same colours but with more titanium white to make the value lighter. Now one of the things in my paintings is I'm always trying to keep an eye on the colour harmony so it can read well. And the way we can do this is to include common colours throughout the painting. So I try and carry similar colours throughout. This is another reason why I use a more limited palette because it means I'm more likely to be using similar colours throughout the painting. And it will also help with your colour mixing and understanding of colour. So those main colours are established and I've already quickly built up a tonal dynamic within this painting, which is going to allow me to create the atmospheric depth within the painting much easier. So now that I've got this sorted, I'm going to get straight into the clouds in the sky and I paint the cloud highlight a mix of titanium white and burnt sienna mostly. And I've allowed the shadows of the clouds to mix in with this as well. I don't want the cloud highlights to be too bright because otherwise they're gonna jump forward in the painting. They need to sit back in the landscape. The sky I've kept really simple and it's a mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. Some beautiful clean color here and this color combination is perfect for skies. I'm holding the tip of my brush here to get some more painterly marks as I work those clouds and then I move on to the main body of the ocean. This is a mix of ultramarine blue, titanium white, some yellow ochre and a little bit of phthalo green that's just going to kick up the saturation a bit. Now I don't mix these colours together thoroughly, I just sort of mix them up into little puddles and some areas will have more ultramarine blue or more titanium white for example. In this case the sea is more darker and more blue in the distance and then we're getting those lighter values and more of that turquoise coloured water in the foreground. Next I'm able to use my cloud highlight mix to paint the areas of white water on the breaking waves and the foam patterns in the foreground. The distant headland has a few highlights on it in areas that are in the direct sun and there's a lot of pale tones there in the hills. So for this I'm going to mix a low chroma yellowish green, starting with yellow ochre, a small amount of ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson, also titanium white to get the light value that I want. Now this colour is going to look really pale and low in chroma or saturation. I then use a number 3 flat brush to mark in some subtle highlights to that distant headland. I paint the areas in light of the mid-ground rocks with a mix of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a little alizarin crimson and titanium white, but I make it heavier on the burnt sienna. You'll notice that I've used these colours in the clouds and the headlands and the rock shadows as well, so this is going to tie everything together to help maintain that colour harmony in the painting. I also use the same colours here for that pale coloured rock in the foreground but with much more titanium white and less burnt sienna in the mix. Pretty much all of these rocks are pale, low chroma colours. I paint the grass in the foreground with a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and then I increase the saturation with some cadmium yellow. This is also going to lighten the value of the colour as well. 
I then round off that mixture with some alizarin crimson because the red in the crimson is opposite to green on the colour wheel and that's just going to knock it back a bit and harmonise the green. I also make the value lighter by introducing some titanium white and I can also shift the hue of the colour and create some emerald tones by mixing in a small amount of phthalo green. Now when it comes to painting things like grass for example, keep in mind that it's one of the lighter values to be found in the landscape along with the sky and clouds which are also generally light value colours. The rocks and the slanted planes are usually much darker in value, so keep this in mind when you're painting things like landscapes and seascapes. Although there are no trees in this painting, trees are some of the darkest values to be found in the landscape. Now at this point in the painting I've established my main colours and values and what needs to be done now is to just go back across the whole painting and just tidy up those areas and prepare it in a manner that once it's dry it's going to be easier and less work when I start adding detail on top of it. Overall I'm going to be keeping this painting relatively loose and painterly but there's still going to be a bit of detail in it. I'm keeping in mind that it's a colour study and going to be a reference for a larger painting so I don't want to spend too long on it. So what I do here is I just restate some of these rock shadows and just tidy up the sea and the water in the foreground. Once I've worked on that I allowed the painting to dry for a couple of days. The Liquid Original is going to speed up the drying time so I mean usually it's dry by the next day anyway but I usually just leave it a couple of days. The painting is now dry and generally what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work back from the furthest zone in the painting and move forward. I'll be layering on more paint, building up those lighter values in the various areas such as the clouds and the sea for example, and also adding a few finer details. Now when I worked on this painting I just spent a bit of time on it over a few evenings and just concentrating on individual zones. So I started by adding some more details to the sky, adding some more highlights to the clouds which was mostly a mix of titanium white with some burnt sienna and that burnt sienna is just going to give it a nice orange glow to the white there. Again it doesn't matter if some of the cloud shadows mix into it as well because I want the clouds to sit back in the landscape and I don't want them jumping too far forward. I also re-emphasise the base of the clouds as well and just make them look more solid. With regards to colour mixing from now on, I'm pretty much using the same colours as I used during the blocking stage, although they'll be in different combinations, but largely tethered to the same colour mixes. I add another layer to the sky as well, again using ultramarine blue with some titanium white, just to make sure that I'm covering the canvas completely and the white underneath isn't showing through. Now if you've seen some of my older videos you'll see that many of my paintings started off with a layer of burnt sienna where I toned the surface which helps to warm up the painting as it comes through the paint layers. Now this is a nice way to paint and I definitely recommend you try this but I actually found that painting on a white surface again my colours were looking cleaner and I wasn't getting lost in my dark so much so meaning that my dark values weren't coming out so dark. This is a problem that I had with some of my previous paintings. I was having to make readjustments to the values because they were coming out too dark. I found that my colours also look cleaner on a white canvas as well. But I'd recommend try both and see what works for you. So here I was working forward in the painting, adding more details to the white water of the breaking waves and the foam in the foreground, and then making adjustments and restating the darks in these rocks. I then built up the shadows in the foreground, especially in the grass, and this was a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow ochre. There's also rock shadows there that I'm starting to paint so that I can also communicate the suggestion of stones and pebbles on that foreshore there, and of course the shadows in the rocks. Now as I said I spent a few evenings on this painting but really only for a short amount of time, like literally like an hour or two at the most, and just focused on individual zones. 
The last thing I do in all my paintings, particularly this one, is that I save my lightest values until the very end. And this is where you can really make your painting come alive. We're going to be building up those tones within the painting so that we're saving our lightest values right at the very end and that we've always still got somewhere to go within the painting. So here I'm painting the highlights and those really light areas and the breaking waves and the foam and it's mainly just a mix of titanium white with a small amount of burnt sienna. Give it a bit of an orange glow there. I'm also using smaller brushes, a number zero round brush which is perfect for painting breaking waves. Now I'll just share some thoughts on painting colour studies. They're really useful for painting larger paintings because you've got something to refer to and you can see the road ahead. The other thing is, is if your painting is not going to work, i.e. you paint a small painting and it just looks awful, at least you didn't do that on a large painting and get into it and go, ah, it's not working and you will have wasted a load of time and it's very frustrating. And believe me, this has happened to me many, many times before I started doing colour studies. So in the long run, colour studies will actually save you time because you're less likely to have a pile of failed paintings. Also, chances are your colour studies will look great and they'll work and you can also sell them as small paintings as well, so it's a double bonus. As I said in the intro of this video, there's a value to painting local scenes as well because people identify with them and landscapes and seascapes are definitely some of the top selling paintings anyway. But local recognisable scenes means you're much more likely to make a painting sale and that's always good for us artists. Now if you'd like to learn more about painting landscapes and seascapes then click the thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my website at samuelerp.com. I've got loads of free painting resources on my website blog and here I also provide reference photos as well if you'd like to have a go at painting some of the artworks I've created. If you sign up to my email list, I'm giving away a free ebook on introduction to oil painting that covers all the oil painting basics like paints to use, brushes, mediums. Also there's some color theory in there, how to clean your brushes, and I've got links to websites where you can buy paints and brushes. Also some articles to get you inspired to paint as well. If you'd like to delve further into landscape painting, then check out the painting videos I have for sale on my website and you can also get instant access to all of these videos by subscribing to me on Patreon for just $5 a month. Each month you get a full length in-depth painting video where I show you everything including how to mix all the colours which I demonstrate on my palette and you get access to all of the other painting videos. So. If you're new to painting especially or you just want to improve your painting skills this is a brilliant way to do it because my Patreon channel is like a painting course. There's a whole year and a half worth of painting videos on there that you can have instant access to. So I've put all those links in the description box below. I'd also like to say thank you to anybody that subscribed to my Patreon channel or purchased a video from me from my website. It all really helps to keep the paintbrushes in my hands and so that I can carry on making painting videos for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to paint some seascapes. Thanks for watching, have a beautiful day and happy painting.